Hello everyone, I'm Douglas, and I'm thrilled to share with you the first chapter of my favorite book series. It's called Night Shift Nightmares. Our story tonight is The Possessed Guest, which tells the tale of a restaurant customer who becomes possessed by an unknown entity after eating a meal with an accidentally added ingredient. As a sandwich maker at For Here's, I find the story both relatable and intriguing. I think you're going to find this story enjoyable too. So grab a seat by the fireside and let's dive into chapter one of Night Shift Nightmares, volume one, written by Justin Parker. I heard about that guy. He's very handsome. I heard he has the biggest teeth in the world. Yeah, but he has small ears. So gross. Ugh. What are you guys even talking about? Have you lost your minds? Settle down. Do I need to get the spray bottle? That's better. Okay. Chapter one, my way or the highway. Nestled in the heart of the countryside is a little town by the name of Spreckles, known for its quiet streets, old fashioned buildings and friendly locals. The Sugar Spoon Diner, which had become a staple in the town over the years, always excited the locals, despite the sleepy atmosphere of the town of Spreckles. Many of the residents had grown up eating there, and it had become a gathering spot for the community. As the sun began to set, the Sugar Spoon was gearing up for its night shift, and it was always during this time that something odd was bound to occur. Max rushed to the Sugar Spoon, as he was running late as usual. However, he always managed to arrive just in time for his shift to begin. Max had been working as a waiter for the past few weeks and was still getting used to the strange occurrences that happened regularly during the night shift. As he walked through the door, he was welcomed by the familiar sound of the bell above the entrance. Hey Max, Sally greeted as she filled a bowl with individually wrapped chocolate mints at her podium, intended for customers to take as they leave the restaurant. Are you ready for another exciting shift? She asked with a chuckle. Max eyed the bowl of chocolate mints. I don't think I'll ever get used to this place, he said. Every time I come here, it feels like I've stepped into an alternate dimension. Max reached for a mint from the bowl Sally had just filled. She quickly shot him a disapproving look and playfully slapped his hand, making it clear that she didn't appreciate him taking a mint that was intended for the diner's guests. Yup, Sally said with a smirk. Whenever I mention where I work, people immediately bring up the diner's nickname, the Spooky Spoon, because of the rumors that this place is haunted. I've even heard someone claim that there is a rip in the fabric of space and time that just so happens to be here in this little old diner, Sally chuckled at the thought. Some customers even come to the Sugar Spoon hoping to have a paranormal experience. But honestly, I think it's just because we live in such a dull town that people crave excitement. Reggie, the chef, poked his head out from the kitchen. You two discussing the supernatural again? He asked with a playful grin. Maybe we can hire some goblins to help me keep up with all these orders, Reggie suggested jokingly before quickly returning to his cooking duties as he noticed Liz appear. We've already got a goblin working here, don't we, Max? Liz said as she approached Max and Sally, joining in their conversation. Are you two still surprised by the strange activities of this place? Even after hearing Reggie's singing, she added with a hint of amusement in her voice. Strange things happen here all the time. It's just another day, another dollar. Although Liz seemed unfazed by the paranormal activity of, at the Sugar Spoon, deep down she was just as scared as everyone else. However, she knew that to achieve her goal of becoming the manager of the Sugar Spoon, she needed to appear level-headed and quick-thinking during times of crisis. The bell above the door chimed as a customer walked in. Liz looked at Max and signaled him to leave the podium so Sally could tend to the guests and help seat him. The customer, a truck driver passing through Spreckles, rushed into the Sugar Spoon Diner for a quick bite before continuing his journey to a nearby town. He was curt with Sally, and she couldn't help but notice the old baseball cap he was wearing. It had a faded slogan that read, It's my way or the highway, which seemed to sum up his personality. Sally led the man to his table. As he sat down, she handed him the menu with a smile, trying her best to be polite. However, 
the man had an issue with the dinner menu selection. What kind of diner doesn't have chicken fried steak? This place is a joke, he grumbled, scanning the menu with a scowl. We stopped serving chicken fried steak after lunch hours, Sally explained, and suggested some of the other dishes that were available. But we have some great burgers and fries that are sure to satisfy your hunger. Max will be here shortly to take your order, she said, pointing out the burger section of the menu. The man looked past the burger section and began to read the pizza section while tut-tutting in disappointment. Hey Douglas, well, huh? what exactly is tut-tutting? Well, little green thing, it's, uh, it's when you make this sound. Well, I'll be damned. Yes, you will be damned if you interrupt me again. Don't say that sort of stuff to me, Douglas. You don't want to see my other side, my bad side. Ooh. Guys. Can we finish the chapter? Uh, where was I? Oh, oh yes, uh, the man looked past the burger section and began to read the pizza section while tut-tutting in disappointment. Max approached the man with a smile, trying to diffuse the tension. Good evening, sir. I noticed you seem to be in a bit of a hurry. Would you like me to take your order so we can get it to you quickly? The man scowled at Max. I'll have a personal sized pizza with pepperoni. Extra cheese, light sauce, and tomato slices. And it better be right the first time. I don't have all day to sit around waiting for my order to be remade. I gotta get back on the road. Max nodded patiently. Absolutely, sir. Would you care for anything to drink? My name is George. Call me George. And a glass of water is fine, the man interrupted. Absolutely, George. A personal sized pizza and water. We'll make sure it's perfect for you, and don't worry, we'll get it out to you as soon as possible, Max replied with a smile as he headed for the kitchen. Sally approached the table with a basket of warm breadsticks. Here you go, sir. Our breadsticks are freshly made and complimentary. I hope you enjoy them, she said with a smile. George grunted in response and snatched a breadstick from the basket, barely acknowledging Sally's presence. She quickly retreated to her podium trying not to let his rudeness affect her. Max handed the order ticket to Reggie and leaned in to whisper, we got an angry one out there. Let's get him in and out quickly before he causes a scene. Reggie chuckled as he looked over the order. No problem, I can make this pizza in my sleep. I'll get right on it, he said, turning to the oven to prep the ingredients. Max decided to hang back in the kitchen to avoid any further unpleasant interaction with George. However, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw some utensils on the counter move on their own. Reggie, did you see that? Max asked. But Reggie was too focused on the pizza dough he was preparing to respond immediately. After a delay, Reggie replied with nothing more than, huh? Max shrugged off his unease, thinking it might be his mind playing tricks on him due to the stress of wanting George gone quickly. Never mind, he muttered. Little did Max know that his remark about George causing a scene would be prophetic for the events of the night ahead. As Reggie rolled the pizza dough out, Max still felt uneasy, anticipating the dinner rush and wanting George gone before then. He waited by the kitchen door nervously half expecting George to burst in at any moment, demanding his meal. Well, that concludes chapter one. We will continue this story in the next video where I read chapter two, Recipe for Disaster, where we learn of the ingredient that is added by mistake to the customer's order. Why did you go ahead and tell us what the ingredient was, Douglas? We will just have to wait and see, won't we? I bet it was a dead mouse. Oh, word? Well, that's baloney. For real. Get bet, no. Love you too, babe. You mean to tell me you think the ingredient was baloney? No, what that no good gnome said was baloney. I bet it was rat poison. That stuff is the worst. Sounds exotic. Got any? You know, speaking of rat poison, who keeps putting that stuff out? It's everywhere nowadays. Well, it really hurts a body with that stuff. Uh, any, anyway, uh, thank you for joining me for the first chapter of Night Shift Nightmares Volume 1. I had a blast reading the story to you all, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I want to give a big thank you to all my wonderful Patreons who made this video possible. If you enjoyed this story, please hit the like button and subscribe to Horrible Home Video on YouTube for more exciting content. In the next episode, I'll continue with Chapter 2 of The Possessed Guest, so stay tuned for more thrilling adventures. 
once again, thank you for sitting fireside with us. I look forward to seeing you next time.